Facts and data are good to have, but they don't make you the person you are. The answer to seeking your best self can be found in stories, both in film and book format. Fictional influence breaks down the stories that make us and shines a light on how they inform our society and our morality. I'm Kristen McTiernan, author and ghostwriter, and I have a story to tell you. Paradise requires violence. Furiosa and protecting what's yours. Furiosa is the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road that no one asked for, but was actually good and truthful. The movie opens with Furiosa as a young girl living in a green, beautiful place, foraging for apples with another young girl when the sound of motorbikes alerts her to the presence of intruders. We know from watching Fury Road that this paradise is one small patch of plenty in a vast wasteland, one that must be kept secret. Were the intruding men on motorbikes to be allowed to leave and live, they would report back to the other men about this paradise, this place of abundance, as they called it. And like a swarm of locusts, they would tear through it until nothing remained. Furiosa knows this, even though she's a child. And so does her mother. And together, they endure horrible suffering to keep the secret. That's the thing about any paradise or utopia. It can only exist for a few. Let the masses in and it'll just turn into a hell. The Tyranny of Should Just like the motorbike-riding marauders, our real world is full of people who see something they want and decide that means the owner or resident of that thing should just give it to them. This unfortunately large cohort of humanity believes that I want is a perfect synonym for you should. I see that you have a house that you only occupy for half the year. I want that house. You should give it to me. I see that you have money that you've earned through commerce. I want more money than I have. You should give me yours so I can pay off my debts. I see you have large, bouncing breasts. I want to satisfy my arousal. You should hold still while I grab them, perhaps while calling you names. The foregone conclusion that we must all defend what is precious in order to preserve and protect it has somehow, against all reason, become lost. There are certain ideologies that have the flip side of the coin when it comes to should. Specifically, that we should be able to preserve our little paradise without lifting a finger. That other people should do the right thing and leave us be, just because. Women should be able to walk down the street buck naked without being harassed. This nonsensical assertion completely ignores human nature as well as applying some weird revisions to history, insisting that in times past, men were better, more refined, and would never stoop to leering or groping, or worse. Of course, this is ridiculous. The Victorian era is often mentioned specifically as the time when men were gentlemen and thus above such things, which is weird for the time of Jack the Ripper. Uh, if you'll recall, the Vin... If you'll recall the Virginia Woolf masterpiece Orlando, when our main character inexplicably switches from being a young man to a young woman, Orlando is startled and disconcerted by the fact that he, now she, can't walk anywhere alone. When Orlando attempted to do so, random gentlemen sprinted to her, offering her the protection of their arm. Women just didn't walk alone, not ladies anyway. It was understood that they needed the protection and men were duty-bound to provide it. These same Victorian gentlemen carried canes as part of their attire, or long, heavy-handled umbrellas even when it wasn't raining. Do you think they had a hard time walking back then? That there was some outbreak of polio? No. They carried these accessories to beat brigands about the neck and shoulders should they dare accost a lady or attempt thievery. Both were common at the time. Duels were also a thing, in case you wanted to shoot your mouth off. The duels first came in the form of swords, and then later with pistols, should a man step out of bounds, either with his words or his behavior. It wasn't that people were better back then. They most certainly weren't. It's just that there were consequences. The people knew that in order to preserve what was precious, violence would be required. Somewhere along the line, we lost that. Good fences, good neighbors. This two-pronged should war has dissolved the formerly high-trust society I grew up in, and it's not something I've taken to, if I'm going to be real with you. 
I rather liked living in a high-trust society, one where private property and bodily autonomy were just a given. Not everyone had that blessing in their youth. Not everyone knew what it felt like to leave your front door unlocked, as no one would ever dare enter without knocking and awaiting for an invitation. Some women have never experienced the ability of walking outside their front door in short shorts and a tank top, knowing that if any man did stop to talk to you, it was for a nice catch-up, an inquiry into your grades, and a request to tell your father that he had said hello. The should people very often never experience that, whether they were raised here or abroad, and they don't think that you ever deserved it in the first place. They also get palpably angry when they see us pining at the absence of it now. They call our collective memory of the safety of the 80s and 90s a delusion. But it wasn't a delusion. It was just that there were expectations baked into society. We didn't have to say to each other, This is my house, not yours. You have no right to enter or approach without my permission. I am a person. My body is my own. You have no right to touch it unless I say so. This is my country, not yours. You're not entitled to what we have simply because you covet it for yourself. We didn't have to say these things because individually and as a society, it was made plain that there would be consequences for violating our sovereign personal and property rights. It's not enough to build a paradise. That very act is an invitation for others to come and take it for themselves. We have always known this, and yet our comfortable, too-long prosperity has convinced a powerful few that it's enough to use calming words and the occasional offering to the wolves baying at the door. It isn't. It will never be. The carrot is all well and good to motivate good behavior among the in-group. But it's the stick that makes us safe from the outside.